So this is a quick video covering the macros that are inside the Z Utilities unofficial macro pack O2. So if you have not watched the installation video on how to install the macros, I recommend you watch that so you can understand how to install these macros to ZBrush and also edit them to change various options. So this macro pack contains quite a bit of macros and I'm just gonna go through and explain what each of these macros here does inside of ZBrush. So the first one here is Visible Array to Geo. This is gonna allow you to convert any array mesh geometry you have inside of ZBrush to true geometry. So I'm gonna hit comma on my keyboard to open up Lightbox here. I'm gonna to navigate to the array mesh folder and I'm just gonna grab this array test project here. Now when this loads up, you'll see that you have some tank treads here. And these are created with the array mesh. So if I disable the array mesh here, you can see this is the starter shape which has dynamic subdivision applied, and then it's just been arrayed around, create a tread shape like so. So this macro will go through and it will convert any visible array meshes you have in your tool to true geometry. Now this process will also respect dynamic subdivision if it is applied as well. And there are some options to this, so you can edit the macro to change some of its functionality. So with this array mesh here visible, just come over here and simply click this button, and it's going to convert that subtool there, which had that array applied to geometry. And you'll notice that it's also retained its dynamic subdivision. So a little handy macro there, especially if you have a lot of array meshes in a scene and you need to convert them all to geometry. So the next one below this is dynamic to geo. So I'm going to go back in the light box and I'm going to go back to the project tab here. I'm just going to grab the rifle here. Now this rifle here consists of multiple subtools. And every single one of these subtools has dynamic applied. So some of them have just the traditional dynamic, and some of them are using QGrid. So this will automate the process of going through and converting or applying the dynamic subdivision to all these subtools. Let's come over here and simply click this. It's going to process all those subtools. And now if I go back through, you'll see that all the dynamic subdivisions have been applied, and I now have true geometry for all those tools. So a handy little process there. The next one here is bevel masking. And I'm just gonna load a example file here. So here I just have a dynameshed cube. Now this macro will take any harsh masking you have in your model and kind of soften the edges. So if I hold control with the mask pen selected and just drag out a box like so, as I drag this out, you'll see I have harsh edges. Well, if I run this bevel masking, it's gonna apply some masking options here and now it's gonna give me a soft edge to that area. So this is handy for coming in and just using the mask pen here to get certain shapes masked out, and then you can bevel those and you're gonna get nice soft edges. So interesting little uh, process there to come through and bevel out harsh areas on your mask, get some nice soft effects. So it's just basically applying some blurs and some sharpens to your masking. Below this, we have Group Split 2. So I'm going to go back to the light box here, and I'm going to select Earthquake. Load him in here. Now, Earthquake has a bunch of subtools, so I'm just going to select his uh, main subtool here. Make sure it's the only one visible. And if I turn on my polyframes, you'll see that he consists of multiple polygroups, and he also has subdivisions. So this group split two is going to go through and look at the polygroups on a subdivided model and split each of those polygroups out into a new subtool. I come over here and click this button now. And this is not an undoable operation, so make sure you have your file saved before you run it. I'm just gonna hit okay to that. As you can see, Earthquake is gonna be processed, so it's going through and splitting all the polygroups out to a new subtool and then reconstructing the subdivisions. When this completes here, you'll see we have the entire earthquake model here. You'll notice there are no seams, so it's held the retention of those areas there. And earthquake is now broken into multiple parts. So a little handy thing there, especially if you have a model that's pretty dense, you can break it up into polygroups quick and then break those polygroups up into new subtools and then continue sculpting like normal. That is what the group split to macro will do there. The one below this we have is multi-polish. So I'm just going to select that cube again. I'll just change my mac cat back to gray. I'm going to change this background 
So the multi-polish will come through and it'll apply the polish modifier multiple times to your model. Now you can set how many times this polish will be applied in the macro. So right now by default it's set to four. You have something like a Dynamesh box here. You can run multi-polish and this will apply that polish feature and it's going to generate these nice soft beveled edges. This is really handy to just kind of soften things up on a model and instead of coming down to the deformation panel down here and running this multiple times, you can just come through and with a single click apply that multi-polish effect. Below this we have paint on UVs, so we're going to go back to Lightbox and I'm going to grab Earthquake again. And we're going to have his body selected and I'm just going to go to Solo here. Now let's say I have a model, so we got Earthquake here. Now Earthquake has UVs on him and polypaint information. So in order for this process to work, you need to have UVs. So let's say I'm painting on Earthquake and I'm painting, 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 painting. And then I decide there's some areas that would be easier to paint in UV format, so in a flattened version of the mesh here. So this macro here is going to take your model that has UVs, it's going to export it out, and then it's going to give you the flattened version of it that you can continue to paint on, and then you can convert it back. So now depending on the polygon count of your model, this could take a little while to process. But after it's done, you'll end up with the flattened version of your model here. And so now I can come through and continue painting like so. I'm going to use any of the options inside of ZBrush to paint on the model. And then after you're happy with your paint, you just come over here and click Paint on UVs again. So this will allow you to go back and forth between your version of your model like this and then the flattened one and paint like so. A little handy little macro there. So below this we have Precise Shell. I'm just going to load another example file here. Here I just have a octopus model. And I want to come through now, this is a Dynamesh model, and I want to shell it out. So I want to hollow it out for, say, 3D printing. So I'm going to come to the brush palette over here, and I'm going to grab the Insert Cube brush here. I'm going to hold down Alt, and then drag that out, and have something like so. So this is going to punch a hole in the model, and if I come down here to the Dynamesh tab here and click this Create Shell option, where that hole is, it'll create an inner shell through the entire model. Now by default, the thickness of the shell is controlled through this slider over here. So what this macro does is it's going to allow you to enter a precise thickness in millimeter values and then use that create shell function and give you the precise result. Now the math on this was created by a guy named Mitch. So I just automated the process here. So you just need to set it up like so and then come over here and click precise shell. Now when you click it, you're going to get a little dialog that's going to pop up. This is going to tell you the default value that's in the macro right now. So by default it's set to 0.5 millimeter. And then it's also going to show you the size of the subtool inside of ZBrush here. If you're happy with this information, just come over here and click OK. This is going to apply that create shell process and calculate the value correctly based on that thickness. And now you're going to get a result like so. So you can check this with the move transpose line. And if I hit these edges correctly, you'll see your unit value up here should equal the amount in which the thickness was set to. So below this precise shell, we have a toggle mask and a toggle slice. Now these two macros are going to allow you to automate the process of melding control and selecting a masking brush, or holding control and shift and selecting a slice brush. Now these macros work best when they're hotkeyed to a button. So to apply a hotkey inside ZBrush, just hold Control and Alt, click on the button you want to apply the hotkey to, and then the next keyboard click you set will be the hotkey that the button will be assigned to. I've just assigned the hotkey to this toggle mask. Now toggle mask will cycle through the mask pen, the mask perfect circle, mask circle, mask lasso, and mask line. Now this macro is designed for speeds. You're going to get a quick flash of what is selected. So if you just keep pressing, you're going to get this little dialog that's going to pop up, and it's going to tell you which masking brush you currently have selected. So with this, you can come through and just hit that hotkey. Now I can apply a circle mask to wherever I want. I can hit hotkey again. Now I've got lasso. Hotkey again. I've got line. Hotkey again. I've got the pen. Hotkey again. I've got square. So it just allows you to cycle through these different options really fast. Now the toggle slice will do the same thing as toggle mask, except with these slice brushes. So if I hold Control and Alt to assign this to a hotkey, and now if I hit the hotkey on my keyboard now, 
You'll see it's going to cycle through those slice options. If I turn on my polyframes here, so there's slice circle. So now I can hold control and shift and I have the slice circle brush. Hit my hotkey again. Now I got select rectangle. I can hit hotkey again. I got slice line. Key again. So you can just come through and see all the different ways you can kind of just use that to your advantage, just quickly cycling through those slice brushes. So that's all these two toggle macros are doing. They're just cycling through the different brushes instead of having you to come over here and select them like so. So the final macro for this pack is the undo quick sketch. So if you ever come up and accidentally hit quick sketch inside of ZBrush here, this is gonna pull you into the quick sketch mode, but you may hit it by accident when you come over here and click on edit. So this macro will undo the process if you accidentally click it. So you just come over here and click this. This will revert you back to where you were originally. Now you will have to find your tool and set your Mac cap back, but it should remove the rest of the stuff associated with Quick Sketch. So a little thing there that you may just want to always have in your macros in case you accidentally hit this Quick Sketch option up there. So that is it for this macro pack. So the unofficial macro pack 02 for ZBrush. Hope that helps and happy ZBrushing.